What's going on, everybody? I wanted to uh, get back. I seen a uh, Michael Rappaport. I I know people are probably tired of hearing about this guy, but he posted something on um on Facebook, and he's going. I'm not going to say he's going full Nazi again, but he's going halfway Nazi. He's he's tipping to and through it. So I'm going to take you to the. I know the the image is a little stretched out, but it was the best quality I can do on short notice like this. I'm going to go to a post he made on Facebook. He um he posted he posted this uh about eight hours ago now, you know, from now that I'm reading this. He posted these were all on purpose. Any games being canceled or not. So when I clicked on the articles, they were talking about um, you know, gun you know, gun violence about uh one of them was about a, k a kid being shot through the window. And uh, another one was talking about so many. Another one was talking about um, about I think it was like six hundred students in uh, Philadelphia or something like that. And I'm gonna assume that they they were talking about you know they talking about gang violence. So the thing that I don't like that um a lot of um people that are anti you know anti against they're against black people complaining about the policing in the United States. What they like to do, they like to say, oh, you guys are killing each other all the time. No, it's not you guys. It's poor black gang members that are doing the killing. And even though I know I know a lot of, you know, I'm not going to say everybody. I, people don't like to be painted in a broad brush. Gang members are a very small percentage of African Americans in the country. Yeah, they do a lot of damage. Because why do they do a lot of damage? Because we have so many guns in America. Same thing with Mexico. The reason why the Mexican gangs are so powerful is because of the, because of the drugs and the firearms that they get from North America, not the stuff that they're making, you know, down in and uh and in, in not the, you know stuff from the United States, not not from the manufacturing capabilities and weapons that they're making in Mexico. The majority, you know, they sell drugs to you know states in America. And they use that those drugs to buy police, buy judges, and to buy weapons from from right back from America. So, if you you know, Michael Rappaport was a big uh, Trump basher, is what I called him. Even even when you know Trump was trying to do good, he he still was bashing him. I want people to see how easy it is to get conservative viewers on your side. This is how Trump was able to win the uh, Republican nomination. All you got to do is throw out a few like little, you know, Tucker Carlson, you know, David Duke type of references out, out, in, the, out in the universe and it they feed into it. So I'm, I'm going to go to a few of the comments that, that people are making. So this guy on the subject he said, nope, only lives that seem to matter to the medias, sports leagues, and other organizations are the lives killed by cops. And I'm going to stop the, the uh, Paul guy's comments right there. It's not that those are the only uh, lives that, that the media seems to care about. It's a difference between one gang member killing another gang member or shooting up another gang member's home, killing another gang member's you know, relative. We do the same thing when we go to Afghanistan and fight wars. When people are considered the enemy, you don't care if you're killing their kids or not. Or at least we don't. When the liberals are over here complaining and, and talking about canceling the wars, you know, during the Bush years, the the conservatives were, you know, like all the, the but they're Muslim kids. So it's it's justified to kill the Muslim kids. The the Paul guy making this comment, he he does not care at all about those kids being killed through gang violence, especially if the kids are black. They love it. The only reason why they're pointing out, um, the only reason why they're pointing out gang violence is to deflect from white supremacist cops that use any excuse in the book to pull over black guys and then, and then end up, you know, killing them. It's one thing to pursue a criminal, like say if somebody just robbed a bank, and then, you know, they get into a shootout with the cops and you end up shooting the cops. That's good policing. 
nobody's blaming the cops or stuff like that. But when you're pulling people over for bull drive, like, oh, I, I couldn't see, I couldn't read your tag or your tag was on the right side or you got this dangling from your rear view mirror or your, your, your windows are too tinted. The windows weren't tinted enough for you to see the person in the car. You, the, the, they're not going to pull white guys over for having tinted windows like that on, on, a, on a master scale like they do black people. So this is how Trump was able to take over the Republican Party because they're low information voters. They only view the media that they, you know, either really, really like or or they look at media to get like certain talking points from like like these news articles. When people are talking about, you know, uh, minimum wage increases or reparations funding for education in these neighborhoods, those are the things that are going to get rid of, uh, you know, gang, you know, gang violence. You know, those, but they're against all of that stuff. They're a thousand percent against reparations. So, and and let's get back to, to Michael Rappaport. And Michael Rappaport has alter, was it alternate? He's a, he has an alternate alternative for posting this. He's still mad at Kevin Durant. Now, Shannon Sharp blocked Kevin Durant and Michael Rappaport posted something about it. So now he's continuing the feud with Kevin Durant after Kevin Durant has, you know, seemingly, seemingly let it go. And, you know, Kyrie was talking about, you know, canceling the games and not not feeling like playing. So you want to point out the it's, it's, if he would have just if he would have just uh wanted to draw attention to the article and say, hey, we got all this, you know, gun violence going on uh, with with, uh, with these gang members and, and stuff like that. If he would have posted that by itself, it would have been cool. But he's not the type of guy to, like, want to bring attention to, you know, he's, he's immersed in, like, black culture when it comes to music and stuff like that. But I don't, you don't see him, like, in the neighborhoods, you know, trying to help out or doing youth programs for black kids. You know, even though even though he has a black wife now, you don't see him doing that. Now, there's plenty of, of white guys that do it. There's plenty of cops that do it. You know, uh, most of my football player football coaches growing up were, you know, were uh, cops. Saturday, pro, Saturday morning programs, Saturday morning, you know, program leaders and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I'm not a cop basher. I, I understand that it's a hard job, but I also understand that. The big, the bigger issue with police killing, you know, unarmed, unarmed black um, men is they tend to pull us over for bull drive way too much, way too much. So if you're so scared of somebody, why are you pulling them over? You know, I, I, I'm not saying, you know, you know, if you see somebody speeding, you, you shouldn't give them a ticket, but pulling people over for, you know, these obscure you know, things is just as they matter of fact, they use those little excuses to pull people over, hoping they're going to find somebody that's on probation, parole or hoping that they can smell somebody smoking some weed so they can take them in. That's the real reason why they they pull, you know, black black guys over as much as they do. They're there. If they did white guys like that, they would be like, oh, you're infringing on our rights and they will be 100 percent right. I remember growing up. I when I, I got my license when I was a uh, eighteen, like like all the, yeah, so like eighteen, from eighteen to twenty one. When I lived in uh this uh the city that I grew up in, I got pulled over over thirty two times, over thirty two times, with only one ticket, I believe, one or two tickets. So like out of the thirty some odd times that I was pulled over. You know, they would pull me over, check my license registration. You know, it, I come from really poor neighborhood, so not not really poor neighborhood, but I wouldn't call my mom poor. But the 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 city as a whole was one of the more poor cities in the surrounding areas. So the chances of you pulling somebody over and their insurance and stuff being lapsed were, was real high. So after they always check my license registration and insurance. It would come out clean and it, they'll just like send you on your way home. And this would be they I would get pulled over during dates. I would get be getting pulled over after like 
leaving like a uh, like a, a club, you know, when people are, you know, teenagers or early 20s, you go to the club. You go to the club to, you know, hang out, have fun, meet chicks and whatnot. Or, or just, you know, riding around in the middle of the day. Random. It was always just... <laughs> It was it was frustrating. The, the police departments in the in that surrounding area they would just they just did horrible policing. You know all all police all, all police um you know stations or areas aren't like that. From living in different areas now, I've I've come to realize that. But back to um back to uh rap report. He's gone full. I think he's trending towards a uh, a uh, change in his uh, in his uh, ideology or whatnot. It's one thing to try to speak on gang violence and try to curb it. You know, we do that all the time, but it it doesn't get like news. It's, it doesn't it doesn't hit the news like you know, you know, it, like the police. You know, killing black guys that that didn't become a thing until. Like you start seeing it on camera, it's it's all it's been happening. But when you when you go on TV and you say something about it, and there's no camera footage of it. You, everybody's like, oh, maybe the, maybe the guy deserved it. Maybe the guy was a gang member. It's it's funny because the 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 gang imagery that these people, the gang vibes that these people are complaining about, these are the same excuses that the cops are using in their minds to kill the guys or or they're just their they're just their hatred for you know a, a person of color or whatnot their hatred for you know this isn't happening to Muslims this isn't happening to Asians this majority only happen to black guys because they view us all as some type of you know thugs or gang members or whatnot subhuman and it's it makes it easier for them to kill us and these people, they care nothing about the gang violence that's going on in these cities. Nothing. Because when you mention something about gun control, they, they they say, well, we need our guns to protect ourselves from people like them. You know, No, you don't, because you don't live around people like them. So you don't have to worry about them kicking in your door. And, you know, the main people that, that, that need the guns are the people that live in these, you know, war-torn gang areas. Those are people that need the weapons, especially like the 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 assault rifles and stuff like that. If you're living in, if you're living in um places like, if you're living in some big rural area or something like that, or the suburbs, you you have no need for an uh, assault rifle, other than to go out and shoot and, and have a little fun every once in a while. It should be banned from you. The only people that need those types of guns are the people that live in the poor, war torn areas to defend themselves from the gang members. But there's such an influx of, you know, and production of guns that what happened over the years, the guns started to leak into the streets. Like, you know, it mainly started in like the early 80s. So you went from guns being real rare and and, uh, and expensive to gun is relatively cheap now. And I'm, I'm going to tell you another thing. So, like, what's going on? Like, how are all these gang members getting guns? They... They don't just go out in the, in a gun store and, and buy these guns. No, what happens is guys from like guys from like what's the guy name from GTA? Let like the Lester's from GTA, or um, man, what's the other guy name? But y'all know the uh, let me look it up real quick. I'm gonna look it up real quick. GTA Five characters. Trevor, the Trevors of the world who live in rural areas, who are real conservative, anti-government, and the Lesters of the world, those are the guys, white guys, who end up selling the guns to the gang members. Why? Because they can go buy stockpile and stockpile of ammunition and guns, and they end up selling it to to the to the gang members in the black neighborhoods why because Le trevor can go out to a gun store and buy you know six or seven guns and you know keep five i mean keep two and then sell the rest let's let's say he buys a pistol for two three hundred dollars 
he can sell that gun to somebody on the streets, you know, a gang member or something like that. He can sell he can sell that gun to them for like eight hundred dollars. And after you do this over and over and over again, you know, after the, after somebody uses the gun, kill somebody, they usually throw the gun away or sell it to somebody else. And these guns just end up getting tossed around from person to person and, and killing people. So that's how that goes. And and also uh, and also Mexicans play a big part in uh, in selling guns to you know and to to black gang members. This is facts. This this is one hundred percent facts. This I'm this is not something that I've. This is stuff that I've I've lived. I experienced. I've seen. You know, you can even look at the it was it was the look at the movie Breaking Bad. When the when the cartel wanted to get um when they came to America to assassinate uh assassinate the the cop that killed their uncle in Breaking Bad, the twins who were they getting their guns from? They got their guns from a white trucker, conservative, anti-government, white guy. They got their bulletproof vest from the ammunition, the, the stockpile. That's that's who buys the buys the weapons and stuff in mass. And you know, I don't blame them for doing it, but because number one, they 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 could they, they could give a shit about you know what what the people are going to do that gun with do do with that gun. They're just trying to make a quick buck, and that's what this country is founded on. This found this country is founded on ways to you know get rich quick or to make as much money doing as less work as possible. So if he can go, if you can go spend two grand on some guns, three grand on some uh, uh, some guns and bullets and end up potentially making ten, eleven thousand $11,000 from it easy, people are going to do that. That's what's going to happen. Now, as for solutions, there are it's, we're in the 21st century or, or, or whatever century we're in. There's zero reason. I, mean, I, I like to try to bring some like type of solutions towards the, the end of these uh, videos or whatnot. When a gun is manufactured, it needs to have a serial number on each removable part inside and out. And it needs to have some type of QR code scanner imprinted into it. To say, hey, this is manufactured and went to you know this store to be sold, and it also needs to have a chip in it, a GPS chip with a uh, with a USB Type C type of a uh, charger for the for the uh, small battery in it, so that way people can't go just buy guns willy nilly and then just sell them off to people. You can't you can't make up some excuse say oh somebody stole my gun. No, we got you know th that's 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 one of the ways that that's one of the things that will deter people from buying guns legally and then selling them off to you know people in the streets. That's one of the ways to uh, to curb gun violence. Number two, white folks in in uh, in, in in the middle of nowhere you don't need an assault rifle. I know it's fun to shoot them. You don't need it. An assault rifle is made to, you know, kill as many people as possible. I know people like watching stuff like Walking Dead, and they're thinking that mobs of people are just going to come to your, or zombies or, or black people are just going to come into your house and take over. That's not going to happen. That's, that's, that's not going to happen. The, the pistols and stuff that we have and shotguns and rifles, that's more than enough to 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 to, to fight off what what whatever type of threat you're gonna have in your area, that's more than enough weaponry to help deter the government to from uh step overstepping their bounds and turning the military over to you. The weapons that we already you know that are already readily available, that's more than enough. I I don't want to hear about oh you know, uh, uh if somebody uses a car and kills somebody, should we ban all cars? Yeah, you can probably kill one or two people with a car, but you get an assault rifle, you kill 20, 30 people. If you got a few pistols, you probably take down 12 people. But if you got that assault rifle, you can take down 50 people. That's the difference. It's a, and it's a huge difference. And 
the main thing that mass shooters go for, usually white people, they usually go for, <laughs> they usually go, for, the first thing they usually do is go out and get the assault rifle. It's their weapon of choice. Why? Because they want to kill as many people as possible to make a name for themselves. I don't know why they're doing it. I I, I don't live in that. I've never, I don't live in that world of, of guns and, and being depressed and being on some type of breaking point. I don't even, I don't know those types of people. You know, people that I think were capable of doing it. And the people that seemingly go out and do it, I don't think I've ever, it's, it's just not, I'm not from that world. I, I know there's like a, you know, I know everybody has breaking points and stuff like that, but, you know, I, I can't judge, you know, and, and uh, comment on why why it happens. But I can comment on taking away people's accessibilities to making it happen. So, like, if, if you just got done beating up on your girlfriend and, you know, you're out on bond and they, they tell you, you know, you got a restraining order against her, you need you, you need to have your guns taken away because we don't know how hurt people are, you know. Be, you know, heartbreak is a real thing, and you'll go out and do stuff to other people that ain't did nothing to you. People will go out and kill their, their girlfriend's family members over her breaking their heart or, or, or something like that or breaking up with them. But yeah, because if these, if these, if these, if the, if the, if those, if those conservative people didn't care about all those, you know, white kindergarten and first graders that got killed in that Sandy Hook massacre, they, if do you think they really care about, you know, a a, a gang shooting, stray bullet killing a black kid that's sitting in the in the home doing nothing? They can give zero fucks about a black kid dying over gang violence because they didn't care. They didn't care about the, the, the what was it, 12 or 15 first graders that got killed in the school. They didn't care about that. And look how easy it is to get to get them to turn and get on your side. All you got to do is say say stuff like this. He he could have commented on these killings and stuff like that on his own, but mentioning like the NBA players and stuff like that—that's when that's where you're trying to show your true colors, because this is in opposition to the white lady who just killed the unarmed black uh, guy. This is in opposition to her saying, "Oh, I, I shot him. I killed him by accident. I thought it was my taser." No, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't. And you number one, you had no business pulling them over. Number two, why are you pulling out your weapon for? If you're that scared of them, back up off them, leave them alone, call for backup. Why is your weapon drawn? So that's that's all. Uh, that's this video went longer than what I wanted it to, but uh, I'm gonna turn this into. A, I'm gonna upload this to the podcast also, since it's a little bit longer than the other videos. Thanks for checking out the video. Peace out.